We are carrying on with our NHL offseason review series. Today we're still in the Central Division and we're taking a look at the new team to the Central, the Arizona Coyotes. They've made lots of moves this season. Will it be better, worse, or about the same as last year? We'll discuss that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, today we're doing our offseason review of the Arizona Coyotes. Now, we're going to first look at what was their objective going into the offseason, and then we can look at the moves they made to determine were they successful, did they accomplish their plan here that they set out to do. So their objectives look pretty clear from the beginning of the offseason. They had a situation where they were penalized by the NHL. They lost some high draft picks. Uh, and, of course, as it stands, they really didn't have – the best prospect pool to begin with. So new GM, Bill Armstrong, I mean, fairly new GM, I should say, is really trying to uh, take this team, strip it down, and really restock the cupboards here. They wanted to add as many draft picks or fairly newly drafted players to their organization as possible to really build up the base of young players to take this team into the future. So that was very much apparent that that's what their objectives were this year. They were willing to take on bad contracts if it meant teams taking incentives. Uh, they wanted to move on from, from a few players, um, you know, that we, we were well aware of. And there's still, um, you know, some more that could go that haven't been moved here as of yet. Like, you know, Captain Ekman Larson we knew was surrounded by uh, trade speculation last year. And it was just like a changing of the guard where they're going to strip it down, restock, and kind of start to move forward here, even though it meant, you know, really probably being bad for a few years before they start to move forward. So let's take a look at the trades they've made, how they were impacted by expansion, and then free agent signings coming in and out to take a look at how this team is kind of reshaped going into this upcoming season. Now, the trade front, they were extremely busy. They pulled off some significant trades, probably none bigger than the one with Vancouver, where they traded former captain Oliver Ekman Larson and Connor Garland both to the Vancouver Canucks. And in return, they get some draft picks, which is great for the future, but they take several bad contracts, including the remaining years of Louis Erickson, Antoine Roussel, and Jay Beagle. Now, the good news for the Coyotes, there's only one year left on all of those. So, yes, they're bad deals, but they're not tied to them long term. They get some extra fairly high draft picks in return to restock at the same time, and they get to move on from that contract. They did have to retain a little bit of Ekman Larson, but not a lot. And, of course, Connor Garland gets paid, but instead he gets paid from Vancouver. All in all, a pretty decent return uh, for what they were looking to do. Uh, so, I mean, that was, that was pretty significant. Big deal overall. Uh, they made another significant deal with the Avalanche trading Darcy Kemper to Colorado. They get a solid young defenseman in Connor Timmins and a first-round pick, and another conditional pick on top of that. So, again, they add more picks, a solid young defender who can play a higher, bigger role in the Coyotes organization here. So, again, another pretty solid deal overall for Armstrong. They picked up uh, Anton Strawman from the Florida Panthers, a contract that they weren't crazy about, kind of viewed upon as not a great one either, $5 million. So they get that along with a prospect and a pick. So they get two extra assets, for taking Strawman and all that goes the other way is a seventh rounder. So again, taking on bad money with an incentive. So this team is you know, look at what they've already added here. They also traded Lane Peterson to the San Jose Sharks for a fourth round pick. And they also picked up Shane Gossesbear from the Philadelphia Flyers, along with two additional picks, a second and a seventh for future considerations. They pick up Andrew Ladd from the Islanders, along with three draft picks for future considerations. Then they traded young goalie Aiden Hill to the Sharks uh, in return for another young goalie in corner. Like that to me was a surprising move. I thought Aiden Hill might be the goalie of the future, but I guess they wanted to go even younger here uh, where Aiden Hill was starting to emerge to be experienced enough that he was looking, uh, you know, for, you know, to get paid a better contract, you could say. Now they also get a couple of picks along with the goaltender coming back from the Sharks. So like that is a lot of pieces going into the Coyotes organization. Now, not looking at the contracts that were unfavorable, because, I mean, you're looking at Erickson, Beagle, Roussel, Gosses Bear, Ladd. You know, that, that's a lot. But that adds up to 14 draft picks along with a couple of good young pieces there. So you really can't beat that as far as what they're looking to do. So that's what they wanted. 
That's what they got. So I'm going to give them a good grade and say mission accomplished. Even though in the long run, in the next, like, well, in the short term, I should say, in the next couple of years, they're going to be a way worse team. They're going to take some major steps back here. But they have the picks now to go into the next two years of a much deeper draft to get some real solid talent to hopefully dig themselves out of this hole. Now, before we dive deeper into the Coyotes offseason, I want to pause for a moment and acknowledge one of our channel sponsors, Exter Smart Wallets. Top Shelf Hockey is proud to be sponsored by Exter. Forbes calls Exter the most successful smart wallet brand in the world. They certainly have high quality products, high grade leather. You can put all your cards in your wallet with RFID protection and you can track it worldwide. That's the best part. You don't have to worry about losing your wallet and not being able to track it down. They have a great selection of products to choose from here, a variety of colors and styles, something to surely help for everyone. As you can see in the demonstration here for the product I have, this is a beautiful packaging, high quality. When you open it up, you get a high quality wallet with lots of slots for your cards. You have yourself a money clip if you want to carry cash on you here as well. Uh, and certainly, as you can see, the quality is outstanding. And here you can see the switch where you can help open up your cards. You just one little click and boom, everything fans out right in front of you. Easy to access. Your cards are protected. And here's the back where you have yet another slot. A terrific overall product. And I can't recommend these enough. Extra ships worldwide. And you can check out the link down below in the description as well as the pinned comment to buy yours today. So thanks very much for watching that promotional content. I do greatly appreciate it. Now let's dive back into the Coyotes review. So that is all your players going out. Now what else have they brought in via free agency? Because we know that that's not all they did. Now they brought back Dimitri Yaskin from the KHL. That's another, you know, could be significant signing. Former NHL player leaves, goes, has a much better success level in the KHL. Now he's coming back on a one-year deal. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, they signed Ryan Dezingle, who split last year between the Canes and going back to the Ottawa Senators. Very streaky but inconsistent score. Gets a one-year deal, uh, just over a million dollars to kind of reprove himself down there. So we'll see what kind of role, role he can play for them. They also signed Travis Boyd on a one-year league minimum contract as well. Uh, and then they brought in Carter Hutton, too, to play goal because uh, they needed somebody uh, after you know what they've done here. They need an NHL caliber goaltender. And really, to be honest, no offense to Carter Hutton, but he's coming off a couple of not-so-great years in Buffalo. I realize the team in front of him wasn't great, but he wasn't really either. Um, so I'm not sure what they're going to get there, but the Coyotes don't have – much is going to stop a lot of pucks this year. So to me, uh, this team has taken some major steps back. But like I said, not a big surprise knowing what they were setting out to accomplish. Now, do they still have unfinished business that they can look to do here that we can expect before training camp? And it's very well quite possible. They have more players that have been surrounded by a lot of trade speculation, including Phil Castle, who's been uh, rumored to have requested a trade himself. He wants out of Arizona. He's got one year left on his deal. I'm surprised they weren't able to find something for Kessel. Uh, he's been a very productive player. He has a couple of Stanley Cups to his name now. Uh, he's already got uh, some salary retained from the Leafs when he was first traded from there. They could retain a little bit more. Like To me, that's an attractive piece. I'm not sure why they haven't been able to find a home for him, but that's something that we're going to possibly see, if not, before the season and whenever they can find it during. And, of course, Christian Dvorak is another piece who's likely going to get them a good return, who's expected to be traded as well. Uh, they're looking for a couple of high-end prospects or, uh, you know, a first-round pick and a prospect to move him. So there's a couple more pieces that will likely get traded sometime, possibly before camp. I mean, Dvorak is more likely to go than Kessel, I think, because there's been much more interest. But we'll have to see on, the, on their futures. But a couple of more players that could – Kind of do the same thing here. So we'll see what else they can add to their future asset bucket by trading some more players. Uh, so like I said, is this team better? Worse? About the same? They're worse. There's no doubt about it. This team has taken some steps back. I, they're kind of already started to tank. The, uh, the next year or possibly two is going to be competition between the Coyotes and the Sabres for last place, in my opinion, especially once the Eichel deal finally happens in Buffalo. And they're really gunning for some of the top players in the next two drafts, like Shane Wright, Connor Berdard, like they're going to be some deep drafts with some really high-end talent. And if they're going to be bad, now's the time so they can get better by restocking here in the next couple of years. So that is my take on the Arizona Coyotes. 
Uh, if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and you stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis. And, of course, more videos in this series coming up on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you next time. Bye.